Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share with you some ideas of how to incorporate unobtrusive or non-reactive measures into your quasi-experimental research design in order to improve its causality. The purpose of any quasi-experimental research is always to find the causality between dependent variables and the independent variables. But the question is, how confident are you in your intervention? Can you explain the reasons for the change in dependent variables? Is there any alternative ways or alternative explanation in the change of dependent variable? Is it really due to the intervention that you design? By adding some unobtrusive measures into your quasi-experimental design can help you with the explanation here. What is unobtrusive measure? It is some kind of measurement taking place where the subjects are not aware of. Therefore, their behavior will not change as a result of the presence of the measurement. According to Maverly, there are three sources of unobtrusive measures. It could be physical traces, archival records, and observations. Here, I try to replicate an example um, done by Klein in 1993 in a museum where they measure the frequency of floor tiles replacement in order to determine the popularity of the galleries among the visitors in the museum. So as you can see here, the right hand side of the floor tiles, um, a lot of the um, scratches. So that would indicate that the, um, this area has a lot of visitors. But if you look at the one on the left side, it's as good as new. So that probably indicates that it's not popular among visitors. Here are some questions to think about. Let's take the example of the visitors to a museum. Is unobtrusive measure non-reactive? In this case here, the visitors are not aware that the floor tiles replacements are being used to determine the popularity among visitors in different galleries. So very unlikely for the visitors to react to it. So we can say that unobtrusive measure is non-reactive. But on the other hand, is non-reactive measure unobtrusive? In another word, can obtrusive measure be non-reactive? That could be the case where, for example, the museum put a camera on different corners of the museum to determine the popular popularity of the visitors in different galleries. But the question is, will the visitors react to the cameras? Most likely not. So the cameras are obtrusive measure, but is non-reactive. So the essence of all this is the measure should be non-reactive. So it may not be necessarily be unobtrusive, but the most important thing, what we want as a researcher is the measure will not be reactive, meaning to say the subjects will not react just because of the presence of certain measures. The last question for all of, us, all of us to think about is, are these measures ethical? It is not the purpose of this video to explore ethical issues. You should refer to some other literature on ethics in research. How to improve quasi-experimental study with unobtrusive and non-reactive measures then? Well, you have to think about your research design, your research objective and also the theoretical framework that you're using in your research design. To build in methods to collect unobtrusive or non-reactive measures during the intervention will definitely help to provide explanation on the changes in the dependent variables. Better still, if the explanation can rule out alternative explanations. Now, how can it work or how should you design 
um, this kind of um, study. Now it's very much up to all of you to think about the research objective and also the theoretical framework that underpins your research. These are some of the references that I found are useful. So do explore some of this literature, even though some of them are pretty old, 1979, 1993, but the principles of unobtrusive measure or non-reactive measures are still valid today. So I hope this short video can help you with your quasi-experimental study. Thank you.